Video Killed the Radio Star presents the iconic music videos of Oasis. In this episode, directors Nigel Dick and Dawn Shadforth explain the ideas behind the videos and their sometimes fractious working relationship with the Gallagher brothers. With Oasis, uh, I got my first gig with Oasis through a very simple process. I get a phone call one day from the, my regular client there, and he said, I want you to work with Oasis. And it's like, wow, really? Fantastic. You know, why are you ringing me up? And he said, well, quite simply, you're the only person I know who's English, so you're the only person I know who'll understand what the fuck they're saying. So quite simply, I got my first Oasis gig because I could understand the banter. And of course, the irony of it is, you know, they're very working class lads from Manchester. And, you know, I'm a sort of lower middle class bloke from Yorkshire originally. So on many levels, this was a, a marriage made in hell. So I just played it quietly and then subsequently shot them in South End and I guess passed the test enough to be asked to do a second video or certainly to write on a second video and the, and the second video that I wrote on was Wonderwall which I then got to shoot. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Backbeat, the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out I'm sure you've heard it all before but you never really had a doubt I don't believe that anybody feels The one piece of information I've been given was Noel wants something in black and white with splashes of colour in it And all the roads we have to walk are winding And all the lights that lead us there you know, I've been reading about all this stuff about how influenced they are by the Beatles, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, I'll just shamelessly, you know, rip off the lads. I could hear these cellos in the background. I'm totally fascinated by cellos. I think they're beautiful instruments. So that's where the girl with the cello came in. While I was doing that, I thought, well, it might be fun to see some guys playing saws. You know, it's kind of the same, because it wasn't a pure cello sound. It was a bit distorted. About you now. It was a rip off of um, British musical theatre of vaudeville, you know. And the beauty of this lovely woman who was faceless playing the cello, which is also very sexy, it's, you know, it's like a woman's body, the, the cello intercut with a couple of blokes, <laughs> you know, with glasses and whatnot, playing saws. I thought, I just, you know, that's the kind of thing that appeals to me. Maybe. The thing that I'd noticed and had been informed always just keep the guys amused, you know, find something for them to do. So that's where the foosball machine came from and, you know, playing darts, is to just basically give them something to do so they weren't acting. Said, 
the other piece of direction I was given from the label is don't make them act. If you make them act, they'll walk. So I just, you know, the first thing I did was say, sit down at these five chairs. Here's a newspaper for you. Here's a guitar for you. And I just let them at it. It's all in the storyboard. It's all pre-planned. I mean, certainly, you know, the record going round is a bit of fun, the clowns. I'm, I'm just sort of, I'll have a bit of that, you know. It, it's, it's like that, really. These are my tools. What, what can I throw in there to, to make it visually entertaining and, you know, wacky? <laughs> I read in the BAFTA newsletter that Patrick McNee lived in Palm Springs. So the band was going to be here in LA. And I just thought, hey, let's see if Patrick McNee would like to be in the video. Step outside, summertime, he shows up, he, dry, you know, he, ca he catches a limo from Palm Springs, and he shows up with his bowler hat and his brolly and his suit. And I hadn't asked for that. Of, of course, I wanted that. But I thought it's one of those things, do you ask him to bring his gear or do you, uh, you know? So Sally can wait. She knows it's too late. And he turns up like that. And I said, thank you so much for bringing, you know, your Avengers outfit. And he says, nobody wants to see me dressed any other way. So I just have the, I have it all fitted and that's what I come with because I assume that's what everybody wants. And there were one shitload of girls because I'd learned my lesson from Wonderwall that I'd hired two girls and there were five guys. And of course, they spent all their time chatting up the girls. So I thought, well, perhaps the way to keep them entertained is to have 30 girls on set. So I just, we got a lot of girls and um, that's the video. It was not the easiest day of my life. It was a very fraught day. It was a one-day shoot. The guys arrived late. We've got Patrick. We've got 30 girls who all, you know, need attention and makeup and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. You know, we're shooting stuff by the tennis court after it's got dark, and I'm just thinking, how is this going to cut together? I all wanted to do it during the day. But, you know, you know what it's like. You just press on, and, uh, and eventually the guys got tired, and they left, and. We shot as much as we shot, and then we had to cut it together. So Sally can wait. She knows it's too late as we're walking on by. The soul slides away. But don't look back in anger. I heard you say.
special people change? How many lives are living strange? Where were you while we were getting high? The first thing you should know about Champagne Supernova is the brief was, this is a song about drugs, but the video can't be about drugs. But we want to know that it's about drugs. Well, thanks for that extremely useful piece of information. Back in those days, post was quite limited, really, as to what you could do. You know, when I, I was down there and I said, we'll have some oil wheels, because I used to be a DJ back in the 70s, so I used to have oil wheels in my disco, you know, on, playing on the walls. So somebody on, you know, in the run-up to the shoot, they said, well, what you need is this lens you put on the front of your camera and you just rotate it and things change shape. And that, that's why it's very grainy, because the glass isn't very good in the lens. And um, I said, well, you know, bring it down to the set. I've never seen this lens, and everybody's turning around and looking at each other and rolling their eyes, and you're all the film guys, because, of course, it's supposed to be something I'm supposed to know everything about. And uh, we put it on the camera, and I go, that's fucking great. Let's use more. <laughs> bring the drug lens on now. During the second day, I'd actually invited my cousin to come down, who's uh, a very respected film editor. And her two kids, of course, were two Oasis fans. So she comes down, and she's totally from the film side, and she's sitting in a corner with her two kids. And halfway through a take, Liam gets up and throws whatever it is in his hands down and leaves the set. He says, I'm going to the pub, I'm not coming back, and leaves the set. So I go up to Noel and I said, um, your brother's just left the set and I can't make, the, make a video. And he says, what do you expect me to do about it? And I said, well, he's your brother and you're the only person I can turn to. And he said, he's a and turned around and walked off. And of course, the, in the corner, the, there's a journalist from Rolling Stone who's been sent from New York, and this journalist is frantically writing down all, you know, and I can, I can see over Noel's shoulder, she stops and she looks up and she's wondering whether she should write the C word down, you know, in a Rolling Stone report. In the end, she was very nice and said, um, despite certain issues on the video set, you know, things went swimmingly. <laughs> So you're stuck in the middle of a film set, you know, trying to make a video for a band, and you don't have a band, and the, you know, the one person that everybody wants to see usually is the lead singer, and he's fucked off to the pub. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was par for the course, really. It's like, okay, he's wandered off, I guess I'll have to shoot the drummer shots now for a couple of hours. And eventually Liam wandered back, and he'd had a couple of beers, and, you know, now he's ready to do his thing again. You know, there's a great Nick Lowe saying, which is, why invent when you can borrow? And that's how my process works. I, I, I wouldn't argue that I've ever had the most original ideas in the world, but I certainly try and, you know, suck stuff in from other places and use that, you know, as I feel appropriate. Somebody could argue that those three videos were, you know, Wonderwall was black and white, like early Beatles days, and Don't Look Back in Anger was sort of, you know, help period. And um, 
Champagne Supernova was the sort of psychedelic Beatles era, if you like. I mean, I was consciously stealing from my hero's back pages, as, as I'm sure Liam and Noel were. writing it very quickly at home in uh, Marleybron, in the kitchen, sat at the kitchen table, and I wrote it quite quick. And I remember being out of all the songs that I've written, I can vividly remember getting to the end of that and going, that's fucking great. And I remember thinking, that's number one. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, that's number one. The director, Dawn, had the idea of it being like the Kinks Dead End Street video, which they're all carrying coughing guns down the road. The idea for the video came very much from the music, actually. It's, it's, it seems from a certain time. I made up that Reese is doing it because he's a star and he wants to fall of any of them, you know what I mean? So, and plus, he's lucky he's one of the lads. I've kind of known him for a few years, you know, just from hanging out and getting into trouble here and there. I play an undertaker who kind of uh, wakes up and um, finds himself at his own funeral. spirits in the office today that the idea was floated. And we went, yeah, top hats. Great. I heard it live first in the Astoria a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, I've been listening to it over and over again, trying to get the lip sync right. And it's got right under my skin. Yeah, I love it. We were going to play Snap, but they didn't think it was cool enough, so we, someone came and taught us how to play Texas Hold'em. I'm not playing cards, I don't like to play Snap. It's too confusing for me. And the idea caught that Reese was going to sing it and I was going to kind of just appear in it. So I loved all that. I was on set for 38 minutes. I timed it. One take it took me to have a fake shave. And that bit blowing into the, uh, into the razor. One take that. You know, we're kind of taking the piss out of that whole dance routine thing anyway. You know, there's too much dancing in pop videos anyway. Too much booty, man. Fuck, if you want the skinniest ass in the world, man, you got to do it like that. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with the video, obviously, as usual. Um, it's about kind of sitting around the house doing nothing. But having nothing to do is the greatest job in the world. It's kind of about that, really. The song is an ode to idleness, written from the point of view of someone who's quite similar to Noel, I should think. Yeah. The, probably the best video. Yeah, actually, one of the one of the one times where somebody's written it on the page and you go, "Fucking right, that'll do." <laughs> <laughs> 